In the remote desert of Nevada, a line of cars stretching to the horizon. Thousands caught in a slow motion exodus out of Black Rock Lake, capping a sometimes chaotic final weekend at Burning Man. It was like a war zone. Like Mad Max. Mad Max, no, no public announcements, no infrastructure, no information, no way to call, no way to get news. It's horrible. So we, they shut the water down. Many hours of rain. The so-called burners, attendees of the nine-day event, typically filled with parties, DJ sets, meditation sessions, and art installations, stranded for days due to heavy rain. Those monsoonal rains changed everything, turning this lake bed into a mud pit that traps everything, RVs, shoes, people. But now the roads have dried out enough that that exodus has begun. Deborah Dumas took videos of the sludge created by the storms. We had like this much mud under our feet that just sticks. She sent them to a friend and within hours they were featured in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, even on German TV. I'm so famous, which is really funny because we didn't even know that it was posted and picked up by the media until we got a text message from one of our campmates. And all of a sudden, the world became aware that people were trudging around in shopping bags at Burning Man. And don't ask about the portable toilets. What was miserable were the porta potty situation. Were they actually overflowing? They were actually overflowing. It's kind of gross. You had to like wander around and find one a bit further away. One man, 32-year-old Leon Reese, dying over the weekend amid the aftermath of the monsoons that death authorities say is still under investigation. At one point on Sunday, the situation seemed so dire, the White House briefed President Biden about it. Well, while we walk three miles now, we got, I think, five more. And when Grammy-winning DJ Diplo dipped out of Burning Man, leading a group of celebrities, the nation started paying attention. Cindy Crawford and Randy Gerber and Chris Rock, Kaya Gerber, Austin Butler. Chris Rock was kind of pacing with me and we just got to a truck that was stopped for a second. They're like, oh, Diplo, we love your music. So we had like 10 of us jumped in the back of his truck and we took us the last two miles. It all started Friday afternoon when the area was slammed with thunderstorms that lasted into the evening. The monsoons continued on Saturday. The fine alkaline silt of the Black Rock lake bed quickly turned to a ferociously sticky clay. Festival organizers are ordering a driving ban and urging people to conserve food, water and fuel and shelter in a warm, safe space. But since this was Burning Man, a festival where extreme weather is an annual uninvited guest, some embraced the suck, gathering for communal meals. Here's our camp, mid-morning, Monday morning, after four days of perpetual rain. So here we are out here at the man and partying till dusk on their art carts. I have a feeling the people who go to Burning Man actually like a little bit of misery. Yes, yeah. No, I think the thing is like, I think it's a lot of people who like to figure out and solve problems. Like, you know, building this thing, that seems impossible, but you figure out how to build it. But the clay made it impossible to position the security vehicles necessary to set the giant sculpture of a man on fire from which Burning Man gets its name. So organizers rescheduled it to Sunday and then Monday. But by that morning, the mass exodus had begun. It's, you know, everything's new uh, every year. Uh, last year was 110 degree, uh, all whiteouts all week. The weekend thunderstorms coming off the heels of Hurricane Hillary drenching the West Coast with historic rainfall and causing delays for the start of Burning Man. The annual gathering in what burners have dubbed Black Rock City is a full-blown pop-up metropolis in the Black Rock Desert, about 120 miles north of Reno. People are asked not to passively participate, passively consume, but to creatively consume, to participate actively in art and self-expression. Have you been to Burning Man before? Yep. Self-described as an experiment in temporary community, the event costs $575 to attend, but to gain entry, attendees must prove to event staff that they can adequately survive, bringing in their own food, water, and shelter. Ben Wax is a house philosopher at Burning Man under the name Caveat Magister. Burning Man doesn't have an advertising department, it doesn't promise you you're going to have a good time, but it does have a survival guide. People are made well aware over and over and over again of the conditions that they are going to encounter there, that they could encounter there, that this is a dangerous environment. And radical self-reliance is one of Burning Man's 
key principles. Among the 10 principles of Burning Man are a reflection of the community ethos and further include radical inclusion, communal effort, and civic responsibility. Burning Man began as a picnic on a San Francisco beach. In 1986, founders Larry Harvey and Jerry James burned a driftwood statue of a man on Baker Beach, attracting hundreds annually before moving to Black Rock Desert in 1990. In 1997, Nightline was on site speaking with Harvey. Uh, we create just enough order so that this spontaneous, naturally occurring process called culture which is born of the interactions of people that no one can plan and that no one can control, we, we will begin to happen. In 2004, the Burning Man Regional Network launched exporting the culture globally. Before that time, if you were wanted to think of yourself as a burner, you had to go to Black Rock City. Now you could be a burner anywhere. It wasn't just an event, it was a culture. Attendance and attention exploded in the early 2010s when social media and superstars turn their eyes towards the desert. It's like, you know, not a uh, you know, a massive playground for the rich. And in fact, that narrative often creates the problem that the people who really build the city and participate in it and are most involved in Burning Man are rendered invisible. Diplo, a Burning Man veteran of 12 years, was one of the first to make it out. Every year is something different. I was up for the adventure. I had a big crew with me with some celebrities and some regular people and we just kind of wandered off and made it made it work for us you know and everywhere we went we got help as the tens of thousands started to make their way out monday we made our way in advised to duct tape our shoes to navigate the sludge and mud plastic bags becoming the new fashion statement for zana and norris who are on their way back to their native latvia we have to catch an international flight ah we tried to change the tickets and it was getting like way too expensive. The duo grabbing a $300 taxi to Reno. We found Alex stuck in ankle deep mud after helping a fellow burner out. It was nice of you to stop and try to help someone. Yeah, it, you know, but that's what you do here. What's your plan? Uh, well, the easiest plan in the world is just wait it out. Wait it out. I mean, it's just dry, you know, like this was a whole river here. At one point, that jam five miles long but burners making the best of it. But not everyone was so zen. So you've been trying to leave for days now. Yes. Days. That's, days. Why, <laughs> that's why we're unhappy. Siblings Jared and Carly Goldberg documenting the rough past few days, watching cars spinning out in the clay. Go, go, go. We attempted to leave, to leave. Friday at sundown. And it's now 5 p.m. Monday. Monday. We're just getting off that's the dirt road. Took. Today, though, a breakthrough. We made it to Bishop. Woo! Just got to Bishop. The pair successfully making their way out of Black Rock, now heading to San Diego. 7 p.m., almost home. It put a very, very sour um, taste in our mouth, or in my mouth, and it's going to make me rethink. Still, many found deep community in that chaos. And the rain, the mud just brought a new adventure. Um, best burn ever. I'll be there next year. This year's freak weather testing the limits of Burning Man's ethos. The first rule of Burning Man is radical self-reliance. So your job is to make sure you get in, get out with all your equipment and make sure you have enough to survive. But if you don't, people are there to help you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.